So welcome to our One Health workshop. We're gonna be talking about how pets impact your patient's health. I'm a veterinarian, my name is Kate Hodgson. And I'm Dr. Alan Monaveri, a family doctor. So after today's workshop, we hope that you will be better able to describe the roles that pets have in many uh, families. We also want to talk about ways to leverage the health benefits or zoea that pets have in many families. And we also want to help prepare all, our, uh, all the people today on how to pr use, prepare to use an interprofessional approach to mitigate the risks of zoonotic disease that pets may pose. So One Health is dedicated to improving the lives of all people uh, and, um, and humans, so animals and humans, through the integration of human medicine and veterinary medicine. And One Health is very important in companion animals, and it's not just the prevention of zoonotic disease. Pets are an important part of many families. What is a family? A family is not just a kinship group. It's not just who you're related to. It's not just that traditional nuclear family. A family is defined as a group of intimates with both a history and a future. And so that means that families can include the pets in our lives. Many pet owners think of their animal companions as important members of the family. And a family can be as small as one person and one pet. All families value the strength of the bond with their pet. And there's many factors contributing to the important role of pets and families around the world. And that includes increased urbanization, the geographic separation of the traditional family, so a lot of people are really depending on pets for companionship, and the need for, need for live interaction in an increasingly technological world. And there are multiple roles that pets have in families. Pets can complement the family structure and the developmental stages. So a pet can be seen almost as a child or a companion. And pets can augment uh, that we can act as replacements for human family members. And this can either positively augment, positively improve the family dynamics, or it can interfere with the dynamics in the family. There are cultural differences in the dynamics of families with pets, but all families value the bond that they have with their pet. People are very reluctant to part with a pet even when their physician recommends they give up a pet, they're very reluctant to do that, and only a third of patients will comply with that. Pets are especially significant for children in single-parent families and for children who don't have any siblings. And children will often say that their relationship with a pet is the most important relationship that they have. And we know that pets foster healthy development in children, both physically and mentally and emotionally. So I'm now going to pass over to Dr. Amonaveri to talk about zoea and the health benefits of pets. So I'll be talking about the zoea, the health benefits of pets. Uh, zoea is a combination word uh, from the word zoo, which means animal, and aya means health. So one health includes zoea or uh, animal health. Uh, this is the positive inverse of a zoonosis, which is the risk of having a pet. The opportunities for one health are to improve the health care for family, for individual patients, animal and the human, and their families and their community. This is a, the, the role of empowering of zoea that could play a big role on improving the uh, people's health. Uh, pets in the family. In South Korea, 20 to 30 percent of the homes have a pet, and the pets are often are small dogs. And 85 percent of the pet dogs weigh less than 10 kilograms. Zoea is an animal model for medical research. 
uh, animal therapy, uh, animal assisted activities, and human health benefits from companion animals. We're going to just cover these four categories in a second. So we have been using animals for a long time as an animal therapy. These are the structure encounters when therapist uses an animal as part of a treatment plan, such as using horses for the autism diseases. Uh, there are some dog therapies that could be used for autism uh, also diseases. Uh, we use also service dogs. Um, these are the trained dogs for the visually or hearing impaired individuals and the dogs that are trained to also alert people in case of a seizure. The next uh, step is the animal assisted activities. These are the brief visits, usually about an hour, uh, with an animal in a variety of settings. We use them in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, in the schools, and also in prisons. Uh, university students also can benefit from having uh, animals before their exam, which will reduce their anxiety level. So the Zoe has the profound and positive effects of pets that have on the human health. Zoeya is the evidence base for human animal bound and one health in the community. Pets can be the, uh, a source of social capital for their, uh, for their owners. Uh, they create companionship. Pets can motivate uh, healthy lifestyle choices such as increased exercise. Pets can be a catalyst for harm reduction such as a stop smoking. And pets also can be a therapeutic intervention to treat illnesses uh, such as you know, treating and managing stress. Let's talk about those uh, four categories. Uh, building of social capital. Pets have a ripple effect on the social interactions. Pets reduce loneliness and they are a steadfast companion. Pets address the isolation of people with the chronic diseases. And uh, pets also facilitate social contacts. Pets encourage the give and take among neighbors that build a sense of community. And pet owners are more civically engaged than non-pet owners. Pets are also the motivator of the healthy behavior. A pet can motivate positive and healthy behavior changes. Dogs are a very consistent and enthusiastic proponents of physical activity, more act effective than a human exercise buddy. Pets can encourage regular eating patterns amongst people with the eating disorders. Pets can stimulate activities of daily living, especially important in the elderly, which do not have any companion to, uh, to motivate them otherwise you know, to be active. Also, pets are the motivator of physical activity amongst children. Uh, children with dogs spend more time in vigorous physical activities and take more steps per day than those without a pet. Person-pets pairs and had a greater increase in moderate physical activities over non-pet owners, and majority of increases in activity involve a dog. Companion dogs provide social support for also physical activity. Companion dogs uh, also do not help with the weight loss among pet owners, and, uh, and this has been proved you know, even to maintain that weight loss over one year. Dog consistently initiate exercise, add enjoyment, and uh, our source of a parental pride. Uh, some of the examples are the puppy playgroups uh, that could you know, make you know, both adults and children to be more active. Also, the you know, pets are in the third category are agents of a harm reduction. A uh, pet can be a catalyst of a harm reduction. Owners can be motivated to alter tobacco smoking uh, habits to protect their pets from a secondhand smoking. Pet owners curb drug uh, use or alter drug choices to take care of their animals. They also refrain from criminal activities to avoid incarceration. Uh, secondhand smoke is common amongst the pets and they're affected you know, in different ways. Cats are normally you know, con uh, contract oral squamous cell carcinoma, lymphoma, or mammary gland uh, cancers. Uh, brachycephalic dogs normally you know, develop lung cancers and uh, dolichocephalic uh, dogs normally you know, uh, contract nasal cancer. The dangers of uh, pet exposure to secondhand smoke can motivate owners to quit smoking, attempt to quit smoking, encourage other household members to quit, and prohibit the smoking inside the home. The implication for the practice is the veterinarians are a broad new base of supportive healthcare professionals to amplify smoking cessations um, and not relying only on the primary care physicians to promote that. 
particularly significant for smokers who live alone with the pets, then the veterinarians could be very effective on uh, helping the owners to quit smoking. As you could see on this image, you know, uh, the dogs and you know, and animals can contract you know, secondhand smoking diseases. So uh, please try to protect them the same way as we do our children and our human being. And the last category are pets as the therapeutic interventions. Pets can be therapeutic as a companion animals. They help people cope with their loneliness and depression. They provide a positive caring relationship. Cat ownership reduces the risk of cardiovascular diseases and associated death. Pets can be therapeutic for patients with stress and hypertension. And they provide non-judgmental social support that buffers pathogenic responses to stress. Pet, pet induces a calming response amongst the owners. Petting an animal companion reduces anxiety. And watching pets at play divert attention from a stressful, worrying situation. Pets can be an adjunct therapy for patients with mental health. Physical contact with the pet also can elevate uh, a hormone called oxytocin, which really helps with the uh, feeling of happiness. Pets, pets are a source of joy. The Korea Internet Addiction Center uh, are using uh, pets, uh, prescribing a pet you know, to patients diagnosed with an internet addiction, and they increase their communication and connections with living beings. So now I'm going to turn that over back to Dr. Uh, Kate Heisen to talk about the potential risks of pet ownership. We've been talking about the many health benefits of pets for their family, but I also want to talk about some of the potential risks of pet ownership and some of the ways we can help prevent or mitigate those risks. So there are many potential zoonotic risks from pets, and that includes the risk of infectious disease that humans share with pets, or zoonosis. Pets can also be a source of zoonotic injury, such as dog bites. Pets can impact the environment that we live in, such as producing allergens. And pets can also challenge family resources. So the risk of zoonotic disease or the infectious disease that people share with animals varies by the patient. And of human patients who are of particular concern, are, there's a mnemonic yopum that help us remember that. So patients who are very young, who are old, who are pregnant, who are immunocompromised, or who have mental considerations that we need to think about are all patients who are potentially at greater risk for zoonotic diseases. And there are many reasons why patients can become immunocompromised. Cancer and, include, and the chemotherapy drugs that we use to treat cancer, splenectomy, immunosuppression for patients who have had an organ transplant, chronic disease, some elderly patients are immunocompromised, and then there are immunodeficiency di diseases. There's mental considerations are also something you have to think about when you're thinking about the risk of patients um, for zoonotic disease. Toddlers who are doing a lot of putting um, items in their mouth or putting dirt in their mouth. Patients with developmental delays and also patients with dementia, all potentially are at greater risk for a zoonotic infection. So let's quickly think about some of the zoonotic diseases we're concerned about. Zoonotic disease are the diseases that are tra transmissible from animals to people and back again, frankly. 60% of human pathogens are zoonotic and very uh, significantly, 75% of the emerging infectious diseases that uh, we face in this world are of animal origin. And the zoonotic risk of different diseases really varies often by species. For example, cats are often carrying the fungal disease ringworm. Turtles and other reptiles often carry salmonella. The kind of disease may be uh, carried by different species. We also have to be aware of the disease from raw food diets. Both E. coli and salmonella are, can be um, contracted through touching raw food diets. 
Zoonotic injuries include the dog bite, dog bite syndrome, such as infant prey syndrome, where a dog might think that a baby isn't even human, is just a, like a little hairless rat or something. Toddlers and young children sometimes get bitten because of territorial aggression of dogs or fearful aggression. And older children are sometimes attacked by entire packs of dogs because of aggressive pack behaviors. Other um, potential zoonotic injuries are rabbits, hind leg kicking. Rabbits have very strong hind legs. Kick from a horse, fall from a horse, cat bite, cat scratch and also elderly people who might trip or fall over their pet. Sadly, pets can also be sentinels of domestic abuse. So sometimes the pet being injured is actually a sign of abuse in a family. Sometimes abusers even hold the pet hostage or threaten to injure the pet. Pets also impact the environment that we share with them. They impact our homes, our backyards, one of the things that we need to be aware of is larva migrans, which are roundworm infections from animal feces that sometimes get into our sandboxes or into, the, uh, into our backyard. Th those are carried by dogs, cats, and raccoons. Toxoplasmosis is another uh, zoonotic disease, uh, an impact on the environment that can happen. Cats are the definitive host, and the toxoplasmosis is spread in their feces. However, you, humans usually more often become infected by handling undercooked meat or unwashed garden vegetables that have been that are grown in soil that were contaminated by toxoplasmosis. Pets have also have a role in asthma, although that is an area uh, that's emerging. There are many risk factors for asthma. The most, the most significant for many children is having a parent who is also asthmatic. Smoking. Pets can produce, can produce allergens which also can trigger asthma, such, and as does smoking and mold. Pets can also be a zoonotic risk because they can challenge family resources. Pets can be a, a challenge to the financial resources of the family because the cost of, the, of pet care can drain family budget. They can also be a challenge to the social resources of a family. Some pets alienate others and caring for an elderly or sick pet can really put heavy demands on a family. And finally, pets can be an emotional uh, challenge for families. Patients will avoid medical care or hospitalization if they think it will separate, separate them from their pet. And also the grief of pet loss, of having your pet die, is a very significant emotional burden. And of course, the challenges of family resources really overlap and combine to, uh, to, to create a real challenge for some families. Let's talk about interprofessional collaboration amongst the doctors, the veterinarians, and other allied health professionals uh, in using pets to, to improving uh, one health. So interprofessional collaboration is required. Working together with one or more members of the healthcare team who each make a unique contribution to achieving a common goal. Professionals can all work together, physicians, uh, general practitioners, family doctors, specialists, nurse and nurse practitioners, social workers, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, psychologists, dietitians, and nutritionists, and also veterinarians and technicians and specialists and groomers and behaviorists and trainers can all work together to improve one health. They can mitigate zoonotic risk, uh, demand interprofessional collaboration. Veterinarians are very specialists on pets care. And the pediatrician thinks public health officials and veterinarians are responsible for zoonotic disease preventions. But only 6% of pediatricians felt comfortable advising parents about zoonotic disease. So therefore, an interprofessional collaboration in One Health between a pediatrician or a family doctor and veterinarians could you know, really mitigate you know, those, uh, those risks of uh, zoonotic diseases. 
All healthcare professionals are trained to collaborate interprofessionally when working at the edge of their scope of practice. Family physicians should feel free to confer and refer to their patients' veterinarians. And veterinarian teams are also resources to family physicians in mitigating zoonotic risks. Veterinarians can provide support on educating human health uh, professionals about zoonosis and zoeia and provide relevant practice tools. So a practice tip for, uh, for the doctors and the veterinarians, give the veterinarian clinic business card to a family and ask them to pass it along to a family physician and uh, the same way ask if they would bring in their physician's business card uh, to go into their pet's medical record. Uh, we hope that you all learned something today. You know, we talk about zoeia, the benefits of having a pet. We talk about zoonosis, which is the all the risk that you may have been associating by owning a pet. And we also talk about the interprofessional collaboration between healthcare professionals and you know, all veterinarians, family doctors, and nurses in order to improve the health of the human beings and animals together. So. Dr. Monaveri and I have been working on some research and we've uh, created a program where we've asked family physicians and nurse practitioners and other primary care providers to just ask their patients if they have pets to simply say, do you have a pet? And that we have found that that just opens the door for the family physician to learn so much about what's important to that family and some of the, um, some of the, uh, the, the ways that pets can be activated to be a health resource in that family. So that's uh, some of the research that we've been doing and we've had really great results with that. That definitely opens up a, a, a big uh, window for the family doctors to understand better about their uh, psychosocial and social demographic of their patients and also it improves the relationship and rapport as between the patients and their family doctor. The other thing, the other um, part of our research is that we've actually created some worksheets that help um, pet owners tell their family physician about pets, about the pets that live in their family. And one of the things is for a family to build a collage or draw a picture or even just show photographs of the pets in their family to their physician. It helps explain how important that animal is. And then the physician can maybe use that pet um, and the, or, as a motivator to do some healthy behaviors like exercising more. We've also created um, a worksheet on what we call calming exercises with pets, which is to use um, even just petting, just, you know, stroking your cat or dog or grooming at your animal as a, as a kind of a mindfulness exercise to help to help people learn how to calm down. And there has been lots of research showing that that petting alone you know, could improve your health and reduces the risk of cardiovascular diseases such as high blood pressure, uh, stroke and heart attack by releasing some hormones inside your body that could you know, have a calming effect on the stress level. An another um, kind of health promotion uh, a thing that we've been working on is actually encouraging people to exercise more with their pets, whether that be going for a walk with their dog or playing with their playing hide and seek with their cat or um, or going riding a horse or whatever, and actually keeping track of that, keeping an exercise diary of what you do with your pet as a way to encourage physical activity for the entire family. That definitely really helps you know, many of our patients you know, to find a motivator for healthy behaviors such as exercising, even walking, uh, would be a very beneficial to their health. Yet another of these patient education tools that we've been testing is what we call celebrating connections with your pets, which is about celebrating those social connections that pets augment whether it be the relationship you have with your own pet or the important role that the pet has in the family 
or even how the pet helps you meet people in your neighborhood. Um, these uh, tools are very, very effective on helping our patients you know, to change their behaviors or you know, adopt a healthier behavior. I want to just thank you, uh, Markham Stofel Hospital and Markham Stofel Hospital Foundation, for providing us you know, uh, very kind support in, uh, uh, in order to do our research and also provide all these tools to our, our patients.